Hey everybody, um, sorry for the uh, clickbaity title. If you were looking for like a showdown between um, Vallejo and like P3 and Citadel or something like that, um, these are just like my favorite paints. <laughs> so, and I use all of them, you know, on these guys. Uh, the paint job came out looking really, really good. I'm about to do the the thumbnail for um, for the video and. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought I would talk about, like, why I like these paints for their particular jobs so much. Um, anyways, yeah, get on with it. So these guys have, um, all been prime black already, and, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna start by doing a, um, a pass over them with uh, a, like a, a dark green and then I'm gonna move to a lighter shade of green. Normally I would um, <clears throat> do a Xenithal Prime where I would do a black uh, coat of primer and then I would do a, a white, like a white or like a light gray, kind of like highlight color from the tops of the models and then glaze on color. But this time I'm doing everything, well I'm doing a lot of stuff with the airbrush. So I'm gonna skip that and I'm just gonna start doing kind of opaque passes, um, like building up color on the tops of the models because I want them to be green on top and then a lighter color on their bellies. Uh, we're gonna use a concept called um, counter shading. Uh, it's, it's something that's seen in nature uh, almost like 100% of the time in all animals that face any kind of predation. So basically like if an animal is uh, under, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, under 100, like 100 kilograms, I think it's like, it's like roughly like 200 pounds or something like that. Well, like I'm not good at metric, but um, yeah, like under like 200 pounds, Basically, they're gonna have some kind of camouflaging where, um, like with their fur or their scales or wherever, where their bellies are gonna be lighter than their backs because if you're looking at them down from the top, then they're gonna look like whatever the environment that they live in. And then if you look at them from their bellies, they're gonna look more like the sky or like what's above them in the canopy or whatever, depending on where they hunt or where they live. So we're gonna use that on these guys with the airbrush. If you want me to get close to you, just tell me what to do, tell me what to do. So now um, I'm gonna start going over them. The, I'm going to start going over them with a lighter shade of green. And I think that the first the first color I used was Vallejo's uh, like forest green, and then this is like a goblin green. Um, and I'm just mixing them straight into the airbrush uh, cup. This is the reason why I love my gravity fed airbrush is because I can just mix paint right in it. And um, so it's it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Um, you know that there's already green in there because we're mixing a different shade of green but I am gonna like thin it down I'm gonna use I, I always use um, a little bit of airbrush thinner with um, model paints because um, the model paints are just they're good at like drawing in the tip of the airbrush and like clotting it up and they're a little bit too heavy you know like you kind of want the consistency of like um, milk like you that's what everybody says and, and I think it's a good rule of thumb that you you kind of when you're airbrushing with paints you kind of want like milk consistency for your paint So now, <clears throat> now that I'm going to start doing my uh, blue um, under counter shading, uh, <laughs> what the, my, 
my overly complicated explanation. Um, I'm gonna actually clean out the airbrush a little bit. I'm gonna use um, Windex and I'm just, or, or you know, just a glass cleaner. And um, I'm going to uh, put that through the airbrush until um, it basically it isn't spraying green anymore. <laughs> um, and then this works just fine, like when you're spraying uh, in between colors. Um, it's it's not like a you know uh, it isn't going to clean your airbrush enough like eventually you're going to need to give it a good deep clean but between colors this is fine. So now I'm going to um, mix up a, um, a blue. So I'm again I'm using um, Vallejo. Um, I think that this is all um, model uh, color. Uh, model colors supposedly they're very opaque. Um, they aren't like meant for glazing as much, but I feel like that kind of like varies between the colors. Like the sky blue here is very very thin and not opaque, versus the um, like royal blue or the um, um, you know ultramarine blue that um, that I mix with it. So it should be kind of obvious at this point why um, I, uh, I really like um, using Vallejo's colors for airbrushing. Um, like one of the reasons is that the dropper bottles are just so much more convenient than paint pots to mix colors in the airbrush. But also the, the, they have, they're really good paints, they have really dense pigments. I mean, they have a lot of pigments in the paint, so when you thin them out, they don't really lose their quality, you know, when you're airbrushing. But I also use them for glazing when I use like a wet palette. I do that all, you know, I use it all the time. Um, and I think that that's what they're meant for. Um, and then later you'll see me use like some P3 paints for doing like two brush blending or wet blending and things like that. And I feel like that's like what they're meant for. So this is, uh, this is this is one of the things that I feel like Vallejo, where their quality really shines, versus um, other paints. And now it's time for the liquid talent. Um, everybody knows what this is, Agrax Earthshade. Um, I, you know, I don't think necessarily that Citadel like makes a superior wash. I mean, it is really good. It's, um, you know, like everybody loves this stuff, and with good reason. Like, but the main reason I actually like it, and I use it more often than other uh, types of washes, is because it's in the paint pot. Because I can just dip my brush into the paint pot, load it up with a lot of wash, and then you know put it over the whole model. <clears throat> and then you know that's just gonna make all the little scales pop out and everything and it's also going to um, darken the model make a <clears throat> it's gonna tie the um, the transition together as well it's where the, um, the the blue to green transition is like a little bit stark now the the brown wash is just gonna kind of like blend everything together a little bit So now I'm busting out my um, P3 paints, and um, there's a lot of th there's a lot of things that I like to use the P3 paints for. Um, I mostly use Vallejo and P3 paints for um, 
actually like painting painting and then I use um, Citadel's um, technical paints for different things like I use their dry brush paints or I use their washes or I use their um, you know like uh, different technical paints that have like stone texture or, you know like, things like that um, and I and there's a lot of people that do that um, you know, I know, I know people who are like Citadel fanboys and they're just, if it, if it isn't Citadel, then they're, you know, not having it. But like for, for what I'm doing right now, um, wet blending, I feel like there is no better product for, um, for wet blending, um, <clears throat> or, uh, two brush blending. So like wet blending is when you take a uh, maybe like two or yeah you take two different paints that are two different colors and you kind of blend them into each other and uh, but what I'm doing is uh, this is more like two brush blending so I'm putting on uh, kind of opaque color and when I when I do when I dip my paint bleh, when I dip my brush into the pot. Lots of times I'll like dab it off onto my uh, piece of MDF a little bit and then sometimes I'll, I'll you know use a little bit of water too to, to kind of blend it to um, to feather out the um, like uh, two brush blending is where you have one brush that's like clean and then you have one brush that you load up with paint and then you put down some, some uh, like opaque kind of color and then you use with one brush and then you use the other brush that's kind of clean to sort of um, like feather out the edges like smooth it out but this is another way that you can do that is you can just sort of dab off a little bit of paint onto something like a paper towel or a piece of like this mdf i like to use mdf like when i'm painting um i'll just set the guys on top of it i'll prime them on it you know and then flip it over and then um use the the um the MDF to like soak up the uh, the excess paint when I want to like blend things together. So next, um, going uh, continuing with the P3 paints. Um, uh, this, this is like an Eldritch green, which I guess is like a blue green. Um, we all know that you know Eldritch uh, things are like blue green, uh, cause and core, you know. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, I I did some you know green uh, um, edge highlighting and like kind of like uh, uh, yeah like highlighting with the with the green on the back. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the belly to just kind of like. Um, <clears throat> Uh, make his um, or make make their little bellies kind of like pop out uh, and then I'm kind of like doing this a little bit differently I'm not like um, edge highlighting quite as much um, <clears throat> I'm I'm doing like kind of like stripies and I'm almost trying to pick out like the little scales on the model to um <clears throat> or at least the uh, the raised edges the um the raised scales sort of to like give him uh like tiger stripes you know kind of um <clears throat> and uh yeah that's this is another thing that i just really like the p3 paints for is that they have like really really dense pigments out of the, the pots and then i can just dip my brush in i can put them on the model and then I can feather them out and I can wet them uh, really easily. And to be honest, I would not try this with Citadel paints. I've seen people do it, but they must be like better at it than me or something. But I think that so supposedly P3 paints are specially formulated so that you can uh, do wet blending and feathering and um, two brush blending easier than other paints and I believe it because uh, I I'm, I'm a firm believer in it I've I've used them for that and that's that's one of the things that I exclusively use them for is like feathering and two brush blending um, right out of the pot which I love I don't have to set up the wet palette in order to 
and um, the feathers and two brush blind and all that. Now, um, I'm not going to break out the wet palette, um, but I am going to do some glazing. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some glazing medium to um, do some more um, Vallejo uh, paints. And then this is the um, like their uh, Fantasy Pro line. And uh, I don't know what that means. I think I mean maybe they're more of like a gel. Uh, maybe the the pigments aren't or maybe they're they're meant more for glazing. Um, you know they're not quite quite so opaque. Like they're meant more for passes. These are for like skin colors. But so I am going to add glazing medium. Um, glazing medium will slow down the drying time one while it's in my little um, palette and then two it's going to make the colors less opaque um and so that you can glaze them on you're not doing you know opaque passes you're just kind of doing um like uh <clears throat> kind of like transparent passes and then i'm going to make some more um little uh scalies or, or not scalies uh, more stripies um on his on his back to kind of give him that uh, uh, more of that kind of like camouflaged look, you know, like a uh, uh, grassland hunter or like forest hunter kind of look. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the the glazing medium is just really going to help. Um, like I can leave all that paint in that little palette. And, and this this is kind of tedious, like it takes a while to do all these little stripies. And I can just leave it in there and it won't dry. Um, <laughs> like it'll take it'll take a while to dry. And then, uh, and also it's, you know, it's gonna make those um, little stripies not quite so opaque, more more transparent so that they'll kind of blend in with this, his skin tones and some flesh tones that I've spent so much time building up. All right, so I've got all of the little tiger stripes on, all over, <laughs> you know, on the belly. It's got the it's got the blue tiger stripes on his back. He's got the white tiger stripes, um, <clears throat> which was like the most tedious, like the, the part that took the longest on this model. Also, I tried to do some edge highlighting, like on on their faces and stuff, to kind of make their little noses pop out and their eyes and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> So now I'm just going to come in and I'm, you know, again, I'm using the P3 paint straight out of the pot. And then I'm just going to kind of go over and do like a pretty opaque pass on uh, claws. And uh, and also I'm going to use this on their little eyes. Um, the, um, <clears throat> I, at first I thought that it was a little bit too much. I thought that the, the yellow was a little bit too saturated a little bit too bright but again then again these are velociraptors and like their claws like that's what they're known for their, their, their claws like the you know these are like these kits are from 1994 and like they came out like right when jurassic park came out and i got them off ebay for like three i don't know like super cheap but um the you know, it was all about, it's all about the claws. It's all about the claws. So you gotta make the claws pop. So we're gonna do an opaque pass of um, some, uh, you know, uh, yellow to kind of bring them, bring them out.
So now um, uh, I'm gonna do just a teeny tiny bit of dry brushing uh, <laughs> on the claws, just to make the claws pop out a little bit more. And uh, <clears throat> this is another thing that I like city oil paints for. I like their uh, dry brushing paints. So the dry brushing paints are like, they're dry. You know, they, they have um, like a really like heavy gel kind of consistency and uh, they um, they almost have like a like a talcum like a like a talky kind of like powdery kind of uh, texture to them um, and this is a, one of the ways that I like to dry brush is that I'll just brush it on my hand so make sure that it picks up the ridges of my hand and then dry brush um, on top of the spot that I want to pick up because I know that if it picks up the ridges of my hand then it'll pick up the ridges of the model. And uh, next it's time to do the base. So <clears throat> this is a, um, a cereal paint that I like <laughs> that they, they don't make anymore I don't think and it's a uh, den of stone and it just like you can see how when it separates it kind of like has like a uh, I don't know like it has a stone it's just a really great stone paint uh, and then I, I like to use it for dry brushing and um, I'm also using a makeup brush and then the makeup brushes are really nice for dry brushing because they they don't uh, you can't really load them up with quite as much paint and then the bristles are super super soft and it's easy to um, pick up the ridges of the model with the um, with the brush you know uh, and I know that like the bla the base is still like kind of black and that this highlight is like super like high key high contrast but um, it's gonna all tie together when I go over when I uh, do a, uh, a pass over them with the pigments it's gonna like just sort of mute down all of those um, highlights and, and lowlights and tie them together. Next I'm gonna do a pass over the, um, the bases. Um, well it's still kind of tacky, like before the paint is even really dry, I'm gonna um, dry brush on some dry pigments. Um, <clears throat> if you go to like a hobby store you could find um, weathering pigments. These are um, pan pastels. There, you could find these at an art supply store, and it's basically it's just pigments. It's like ground up, um, you know, the earth pigments. Um, like that's what this. I think this is like a raw sienna or like a burnt umber, and then that's how they got those pigments because they dug them out of the ground. So they make like really nice, uh, like earth uh, tones for the bases. If you want me to take over, just give me the green light, just give me the green light. If you want me to get close to you, just tell me what to do, tell me what to do. So now I'm going to do a, a pass over the little rocks with some, uh, like a gray uh, tone. And you, you do want to do the darker tones first, uh, like switch from like a, a light shade to a dark, I mean, switch from a dark shade to a light shade. You want your highlights to pop out, you know, so don't um, like contaminate your, uh, your uh, light pigments with dark pigments. Um, <clears throat> but uh, also, um, <clears throat> next I'm gonna do a pass with some, uh, some lacquer, some dull coat lacquer. And uh, this can dull down the um, the pigments when you when you dry brush on pigments. But then if that happens, you can just dry brush right back over them and then do another pass with the dull coat um, with the lacquer. Um, it's uh, it's going to protect the model more, you know, and seal it better. And uh, the uh, <clears throat> the the pigments will stick to the uh, to the lacquer, and then even um, sort of. Uh, make the, the dull down the, the finish of the dull coat even. Now I'm gonna um, use some little static grass tufts. Um, I just got these from, uh, from Army Painter and I thought that they were like perfect. They looked uh, perfect for this. Um, they have like uh, kind of like brown dead like little grass spots on the bases and then they get like uh, lighter like turn into um, 
sort of like a, a dry grass on the top. So I'm just gonna use some tweezers and put a little dab of super glue down on the base and a yeah, little dab of super glue on the bottom of the, um, the static grass and then plop them down and make sure that I push them down in there and kind of like spread out the little leaves and stuff. And uh, next, um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, put down some little dots of super glue and then uh, dip the model, the base, into my um, mixture of uh, different kinds of flocks that I've collected. Um, so I have like, just whenever I have any kind of project that uses a flock, like a grass or something, you know, like some kind of uh, clump foliage or whatever, I'll, I'll take the leftover little bits and then I'll mix them together so that I get a, a cool looking mix of uh, foliage for the bases. If you want me to take over, just give me the green light, just give me a sign, just give me the green light. So those are the finished models. Um, I kind of pulled out a lot of the stops. Like this is like kind of like one of my highest, uh, sort of like close to my highest standard of paint job, like almost like competition level or whatever for me. Um, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, those are the finished guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you feel inspired.